Hey everyone, it's Jeff. And Karen. And we are filming this inside our camper because outside right now it's 50 degrees, windy, and rainy. The Actually, that's like the best conditions for camping, but not for making a video. So uh, we just spent the last week at Indigo Bluffs RV Park and Resort uh, in Empire, Michigan, up near the Leelanau Peninsula of Michigan. Uh, so if, if this is Michigan, we're like right here. I hope I got that right. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's a nice campground. This is actually the second time we've stayed here and we have no complaints whatsoever. Yeah, it's really nice. Um, they have a ton of full hookup sites. They have pull through sites. So um there's actually two parts to the campground there's like the um the daily type of you know however many days you want to stay campground and there's some seasonal on this side and then there's the other side of the campground which is their um, resort and that is a little bit more um fancier for your bigger rigs and um uh, your class A's and things like that. So we're obviously on the um, the regular kind of daily campground site and it's completely wooded, um, just beautiful sites, gorgeous this time of year because the um, color is changing on the trees right up the middle of the campground. It's just beautiful. And uh, while we're here, we're hosting our uh, Great Lakes Mini Light and Micro Light Rally, uh, which we'll have a separate video on that. Um, but they've been very accommodating here for us. You know, we when we started planning this, we called them and asked them if we could block off some sites. And I think we blocked off 45 sites. Um, and they were a great help with that. Um, they're, just, they're really good here. And we can't, um, can't say enough about them. Yeah, great campground. So... Uh, in the area around here, uh, probably the most popular thing is going to be Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore. Um, there's a ton of stuff there for anybody. If you like to hike, you can hike. If you like to bike, you can bike. If uh, you just want to drive around and uh, see sites you can do that as well it's uh for a seven day pass because it is part of the national park service you're looking at uh 25 dollars per car uh which is actually very reasonable <laughs> try doing seven days at disney for 25 bucks you're not gonna do it um and then some other areas are m22 yeah the famous kind of uh, scenic drive with all kinds of Harbor Towns and um, pretty sights up and down uh, M22. One of our favorite spots um, in that area is Glen Arbor and Glen Lake, um, which are beautiful. And um, yeah, you know, I I laugh every time I I think of this, but there seems to be um, a non-proportional amount of distilleries, breweries, and wineries compared to the population. Uh, <clears throat> folks up here must love to drink and if you like any of those and you walk away disappointed you honestly didn't try hard enough because you can barely throw a rock without hitting a winery a brewery or a distillery yeah. um, so there's plenty of things to do there's Traverse City as well <coughs> um, the Mission Peninsula the Leelanau Peninsula uh, just, we very highly recommend this area of Michigan. It's one of the nicest parts of, of the state, quite honestly. And this time of year, fall with the leaves changing, you, you can't beat it. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of, um, you know, our last video was on the Keweenaw and it's a completely different kind of area of the world, basically the area of Michigan period. Um, lots of agriculture here. So if you're into fruits, um, there's roadside stands all over the place for apples and eggs and um, cherries. Um, cherry capital of the world, Traverse City. Um, and then also a lot of artisans here. So there's a lot of local artwork, lo local crafts. Um, and artisans so check out the galleries Glen Arbor in um, really all of the towns um, have different art galleries and there's a lot of stuff in Traverse City as well yeah so um, <laughs> we'll go ahead and uh, we'll show you some uh, of the things that we did um, 
Sleeping Bear Dunes will put in a little video of the campground as well. And when we come back, we will go ahead and give you our big score for Indigo Bluffs. Alright, now it's time for our big score for Indigo Bluffs RV Park and Resort. Uh, remember, this is uh, on a scale of 5, with the highest possible total being 25. Um, so we'll go through the five different criteria, we'll give our score, and then we'll total it up at the end. Uh, the first criteria is location. Yeah, I think the location is great. I mean, the um, Leelanau area... Um, just there's so much to do for everybody. There's museums, there's outdoor activities from hiking to kayaking to um, uh, photography and um, art, art galleries, just everything, something for everyone. And actually, if you're a lake person, there's tons of lakes here. So you can rent um, boats and kayaks and canoes and things like that. So yeah, just something for everyone. So really great area to visit. All right, uh, next one is price for value. Oh, sorry, location, we gave it a five. Uh, next one is price for value. Um, I think that the campground um, has is very well priced for a um, full hookup um, campground. Um, they do have sites that don't have, I believe, hookups as well, so... Um, that's an option for folks. So I think it's a fairly good value. And so we gave that a four and a half. Uh, the next one is the site itself. Yeah, the sites are good here. Um, I believe they all have a concrete pad for your um, patio table and um, any other things you might need to put on it. So that's really nice. The sites were very level. Gravel, um, you know, packed gravel sites. So you're you know, chance of being almost perfectly level is really good. Um, like we said, they, we have a full hookup site, so water, electric, sewer, that's really good. Um, and where we're actually, our sites, they actually are kind of double 
um, sights. So like we're in the back and then there's one that's like in front of us. So you're kind of tight close together a little bit, but you don't really realize it because the trailers are positioned in a way where you're not necessarily, you know, right on top of your neighbor. So for uh, <clears throat> sight, we went ahead and gave it a four. Uh, next one is uh, overall experience. So the campground and everything in the surrounding area. Yeah, so like we said, the campground, great. Definitely will come back here again. Uh, area, beautiful. So much to do for everybody. Um, you know, something to do even like rainy days like today. There's always things that you can find um, to keep yourself occupied. One thing to note, um, much like the Keweenaw, it seems like a lot of the local businesses are seasonal. So hours are probably, you know, a lot more fluid than some busier parts of the area. So check places before you head out to make sure that they're open and, and confirm their hours. And then the other thing is um, a lot of places do um, prefer cash. I wouldn't say we, well, we had one place, Arts um, Tavern in Glen Arbor. They've always been cash or check only, but there are a lot of places that prefer cash. So you can pay with a credit card at most of them, but they will charge you that processing fee of charge um, on your bill. So something to keep in mind when you're eating out or purchasing souvenirs or things like that. Uh, so for experience, <laughs> we gave it a five. And our last one is amenities. They do have Wi-Fi here at the campsite, um, but you're not going to be streaming, especially with the number of sites here. Um, it It's worked out pretty well for checking <clears throat> social media or email, um, that kind of thing. But if you're looking to stream YouTube TV or Netflix or something like that, you're probably going to want to look into something like Starlink. We also have a pool here in season. Um, they have bathhouses, but one thing to note is since most of the sites are all full hookup, there is a, um, I know that they're exactly coin operated um, showers, but there is um, a fee to use the showers here. So that is something to keep in mind as well if you are not going to use the bathroom or don't have a bathroom in your, um, your RV. So uh, for amenities, we gave it a four. And that gave us a total big score of <laughs> 22 and a half. Um, so again, this campsite is, uh, we couldn't, couldn't recommend it uh, anymore. Um, also, I said this on the last video, I'll say it on this one. Keep in mind, we don't have kids. So when we do these scores, um, we are not taking into consideration the happiness of your of your little ones. Uh, we are just simply scoring it on our experience. Um, but even then, not having kids, I think our nephew would love it up there. <clears throat> yeah, there's a lot to do with the dunes. Kids just love the dunes and sand and beaches. So lots of that um, available. The campground does have a playground um, and they have different yard games, I believe, that you can borrow. So there are things like that. Um, and like I said, a pool in season as well. So um, it is a family-friendly campground. Yep, so um, this is the last big camping trip for us of the year. Uh, we have one more after this. It's winterizing and fixing all the stuff that broke that we haven't got a chance to fix yet. Um, so we probably won't do a video for that, but we do have a couple things going on um, over the winter that uh, you may see the occasional video pop up for. Um, I do have some video from Labor Day that I haven't done anything with yet, um, so I may throw that up. Um, and now I'm drawing a blank. It's been a long week. Um, oh, uh, also the video for our rally that we had. Um, I am going to do a separate video for that, so uh, keep an eye out for that. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and we will see you... Definitely in April when we head to Southern Illinois for the solar eclipse. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great off season.